Inside one of England's most powerful castles is the deadliest garden in the world. Collectively, these seemingly harmless flowers, bushes, and trees can and have killed thousands of people. Just stepping foot in here poses its risks. We tend to get teenagers fed average about one or two a week. Surprisingly, you likely have some of these plants in your garden right now. Okay, come into the poison garden. Upon arrival, I remembered that I had actually studied plant systematics um, in college. But, well, since then... I kind of forgot everything since I graduated because I got into film stuff. Thankfully, we had John to show us around, who I assume is a seasoned and academically trained expert of botany. I'm a marine engineer. You're a marine engineer. <laughs> Couldn't get further away. I just like telling stories. And, well, stories are what this place is made of. But before we get into that, John gave us a strict warning. Every plant in here can hurt you. Not every plant can kill, but every plant can do you some kind of harm. He is not lying, though. This garden contains Devil's Finger, whose berries will kill children in just 10 hours, Poison Hemlock, which the state executed Socrates with, Monk's Hood, which was used to poison enemy water supply in ancient Europe and Asia, Mandrake, Grasp your mandrake firmly, you pull it sharply up out of the pot! Which, by the way, the castle with the poison garden is the original Hogwarts. And they have real mandrake plants, along with tobacco, psychedelic mushrooms, cocaine, opium, and then John dropped this on us. This is the most poisonous plant in the world. And what makes it the most poisonous plant in the world? So it's the amount of plant material that it takes to kill one person. It's ricinus cuminus, or the castor bean plant. So they can extract enough from one bean to kill potentially 120 people. 120 people, per bean. that little ball right there. Yeah. So you but could then, wipe out like a thousand people right yeah. in that cage. Then it needs to be injected into your victim. That's like the most efficient way to kill with it. Has there ever been a situation in which you or people here that work here have been in investigated for any deaths? No. But if somebody close to me did die under suspicious circumstances, I dread to think what they'd find on my hard drive because there's so much research and the poison plants on there. It doesn't look good. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> huh. S Ricin, the deadliest plant the world has ever known. Wait, seriously, you can get poison from beets. Indeed you can. When ricin enters your body, the substance breaks into your cells and blocks the creation of proteins. Without proteins, you die. But who would get into such a thing? Well, villains is the obvious answer, and with that, Hollywood. There's still ricin out there. These special seeds of the seemingly innocent castor oil plant have been highlighted in shows like Breaking Bad, That's all it takes. CSI, The Mentalist, You want to kill yourself, in a nutshell. And the ever-controversial movie, The Interview. <laughs> It's happening. However, ricin has not been solely reserved for the silver screen. But not just TV shows. We've got the umbrella murder on the wall there, 1978. It was actually used in this country okay. uh, to kill somebody, almost like a James Bond sort of story. There was a Bulgarian dissident called Georgi Markov. He'd been talking to the BBC about human rights abuses back home in Bulgaria. The Bulgarian secret police didn't like that. He was walking across Waterloo Bridge, so they borrowed an umbrella from the Russians. It jabbed it into his thigh and it had a, a micro-engineered tip which injected a tiny ball bearing with ricin inside it into his leg and Markov was dead four days later. Wow. New antidote then, new antidote today. And that's scary, yeah. even scarier. And you get one of these plants in a plant center, not ours, but in most plant centers for less than five or six dollars. Turns out you can find ricin seeds online with a simple Google search, and they'll be in your mailbox in a few days. But they do warn you to keep them away from pets. I don't want you to die. With a little protection, you can plant these ricin seeds yourself. Just make sure to clearly separate your lunch from your seeds. Oh, uh, it's a garbanzo bean, so... In fact, we will give these ricin plants away to seven subscribers because I want one for myself. I'm a subscriber too, so it, it works. So comment on this video what you would do with these plants. Well, actually just just write a, any comment on this video and subscribe and maybe you will get these plants on your doorstep in just a few days. The world's deadliest garden only makes up a small corner of the larger 12-acre Anik Garden Complex. 
Unlike the nursery of death Chris was visiting, the main garden is more for simply enjoying an afternoon. So these are like totally good to eat? They're not. <laughs> Yew is one of the very poisonous plants in the UK, like one of the poisonous trees. Um, if, yes. So the yew tree, the big green one at the back here, uh, most poisonous tree in Britain. Every part of it, if you eat it, and that's animals as well, it could be dead in as little as 20 minutes. So the maze is made out of the poisonous... The majority of plants you find in your back garden, in one way or form, they can be poisonous if you consume them. But what you've got to remember is 80% of all plants have a poison in that affects us. 80% of all 80 plants? 80% percent of all plants. But most of it, it's just if you touch it, you might get a little rash. So, I mean, I was operating under the assumption that, like, poison garden, kill you. This stuff is... It's safe. Eat, eat sniff... You can, you can, you can sniff it. If you touch it, it's like, we always say wash your hands afterwards. Um, since I normally have sanitizer, I'd give you, but I don't. While Harris struggled to stay alive in the safe area of the garden, John introduced me to the Poison Garden's largest plant. So this tree here, you'll see all the fruit on the ground. Yeah. So these are called, it's a medlar tree, or politely translated, dog's bum. I see. You've got I the hole. I see the resemblance, yeah. They've got cyanide in to protect the, the pips inside. Wait, what? Cyanide? Cyanide, yeah. But so the cyanide's basically protecting the pips from being eaten by animals or us. We're surrounded by cyanide right now. Yeah. Now these have dropped off just because of the wind. They're still poisonous. What's your favorite plant in the garden? Uh, I like a trip of Belladonna or Deadly Nightshade. Four berries can kill a child. 10 or 12 berries can kill an adult. Interestingly enough, deadly nightshade can also be used medicinally. One case of this can be seen with Alexei Navalny, a Russian journalist who in August of 2020 was mysteriously poisoned with a deadly nerve agent. To reverse the effects, the hospital immediately dosed him with atropine. And what happens is atropine basically binds to the nerves better than the nerve agent does. So in effect, it kicks it out of the body. And the atropine they get from deadly nightshade. So they use deadly nightshade to cure him of a deadly nerve agent. Yeah. Did Alexei Navalny, did he survive? Yeah. He did survive at because minute, of this. At, at, yeah, at, at the minute he is, but I think he's still in prison in, in Russia, so. As the seasons change, many of the plants need to be relocated to somewhere warmer so they don't freeze in the winter. So while Chris continued to learn about John's favorite death plants, I met with the head gardener in the greenhouse. Is there any controversy with the poison garden or are there people saying, eh, we don't need nightshade and opium here? No, no, people love it. And they're surprised when they go home to see how many of these plants they've actually got in their garden, but they don't actually know about them. This one's a catha or cat. You're just touching them willy nilly. I'm a gardener. <laughs> Uh, this one's Katha or Kat, back in the 80s when everybody was on speed. If you chew the leaves, they reckon it tastes like that. But you need to eat probably a hundred of them plants just to get one tiny little hit. Speaking of mind-altering plants, they also have cannabis. Cannabis? Yeah. So, uh, as well as doing the poison... Just marijuana? Yeah. Does that mean that cannabis is poisonous? There's a lot of arguments kind of one way or the other. It's definitely harmful to some people, um, but whether you would class it technically as a poison or not, there's a lot of arguments either way. Okay. But it's, it's definitely harmful to, to a certain percentage of the population. Everybody knows where I work, and I know who's who, and I can sit in the pub with a pint, and so they say, how's the cannabis going? And I'll say, it's going great. Have you got any? And I go, not a chance. You know? <laughs> yeah. You be the guy. Everybody knows, but the answer is no. Because if them seeds don't germinate, I've got to photograph that and explain why they haven't germinated. So if I need 12 cannabis plants next year, and only eight of them germinate, I've got to write down and explain why the other four haven't. So one seed, one misplaced seed yep. could like really All right. do you in. That's why we've got a license. You know? We have to step by step, bit by bit, we have to photograph and log everything. Do you ever worry that people come here to learn about ways to use these plants? Yeah. Really? We get some people that come that say they're authors um, and they're wanting a really good poison plant to kill somebody off in their book, but it's got to be so that there'll be no evidence afterwards. So they want to know how to do it, with what plant, 
and how to kind of get away with it. What do you do at that point? Uh, it's, I mean, it could literally just be an author looking for a story, but so we, we just don't tell them any intricate sort of details <laughs> of how to get away with murder. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, if they want to do that, they're going to read Agatha Christie. Yeah. So we actually had a, a gardener in here, bare arms, but she was wearing gloves, so she thought she was okay. And a mobility scooter bumped into the back of her on a tour, and she fell in with her bare arms oh, like this. No. Just with a sap, I touched her arms off the plant, and it's a, and it's a photosynthesis with the sun. She ended up with blisters hanging from her arms. Like that. So even till today, she's still got to cover up every summer. No, it's, it, you know what is interesting is that humans have been experimenting with plants for thousands, tens of thousands of years, and you have a collection of all of the harmful ones in one place. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But we could just change the sign on the door and call it medicinal garden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we just tell different stories then. Wasn't that adorable? <laughs>